Hey guys, it's Steph with DebtFreeSpending.com here, and we're back for another day of our 35 Days to an Organized Home Challenge. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss another video while you're here if you get a chance. But tonight we're going to be talking about how to organize your craft space. I know that the number one thing that we need to talk about is where your craft space is located. That It's going to depend how you organize and decorate, whether you're crafting in an area of the home like the living room, dining room, or kitchen, or whether you have a separate craft space. In our home, we have an upstairs loft that we use as like a, a playroom, it's an educational room, it's the craft room, it's kind of our room where we do a lot of different things and so I don't have to have it as decor oriented as I would as, as I did, I should say, when I had my craft space in my dining room, which is where it was for a long time. So when I had it in my dining room, I made sure that I had a, a beautiful buffet that I actually included in the ebook that we have now, 25 Days to an Organized Home. So if you haven't checked that out on Kindle for um, Amazon, then you need to go take a look at our book. We've had over 10,000 downloads already. So one thing I talk about in the book and I show you a picture of is my buffet. And that's actually where for the longest time I kept all my craft supplies so that I could pull them out and do my crafts at the table. I'm constantly crafting for school projects, home projects, cards, gifts for other people, different things. I'm a scrapbooker, so I'm constantly doing different craft projects. So the number one thing we want to talk about, like I said, is decor. If you're in an area that's already being used, if you don't want your craft area to stick out, then you need it to blend in. You need to camouflage it, either by putting baskets around that match the decor that you already have, or some kind of organizational furniture piece of furniture, something to keep your space looking very streamlined. Another tip is to put everything behind closed doors as much as possible. So if you can buy a cabinet or a buffet, if you have a hutch, maybe clear out dishes that you don't use. Put those somewhere else and put your craft supplies in your hutch or your cabinet. So number two we're going to talk about is maintaining a clean workspace. You should start and end every craft project with a clean workspace. Now if you're doing this at the kitchen table, you probably have to if you want to eat again. But if you're in a craft, separate craft area, it's tempting sometimes to let things completely lay out. And so what we want to teach you is to stay organized with your craft area you need to put those craft projects away, even if they're incomplete sometimes. Now, sometimes you might have a project that needs left, left out overnight, needs to dry, or it needs to, you know, something needs to happen. You know, like we had a project the other night that needed laid flat under a lot of heavy books. So we, were, we left that out on the craft table at the time. But the majority of the time, if you're not doing something like that, you need to put everything away. And that way, when you come back to it again, everything's a fresh start you're ready to just pull pull those same project out you know and and that's something that i think will help clear your mind as well as you're working on those projects the third thing that we want to talk about is don't open 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 too many doors or start too many projects at one time the more projects you get going the less inclined you are to actually finish them and that's many times how people get left with clutter and disorganization is that they don't have a craft a plan in a sense so not that I, I'm saying that you have to write it down, but if that's something that helps you stay focused and complete projects one at a time, make a to-do list and put it on a bulletin board or tape it somewhere near your craft area so you know exactly what projects you're working on and which ones need finished by a certain date. So for example, if like my niece's birthday was this past weekend, but Easter's coming up in a month, I needed to make sure that the banner with her name was completed before last weekend so I'm letting all the Easter things go at this time because I know that I needed to get her project done first. So listing your projects in order and like I said if you have to work out some kind of list or to-do to list or a planner for your crafts as well. The other thing we want to talk about is keeping your uh, projects or your items, your craft items, labeled and in bins of similar items. So these are all my stamps. I have my bin labeled stamps with another bin just like it because that's one of my favorite things with scrapbooking. So I have the totally labeled stamps. I have another one for buttons, another one for glitter, different things like that. So I have all of uh, my scrapbook uh, papers labeled. They are in a storage bin as well, and I have each of them. Each of them has a label on the front, which that one came up a little bit. Like current projects, my first label says current projects, and then holidays and seasons floral paper so that I don't have to try and open each one and guess what kind of paper is in each of my scrapbook um, holders. So making sure that everything's labeled as well will help you stay organized too. Um, the, the last thing that we're going to kind of talk about is, you know, like here I did actually go ahead and buy 
a couple projects from or a couple containers from Staples that we put together real quick. I love to make jewelry. I have other things too that I keep over here. So sometimes you do want to splurge and buy some extra organiz organizational products if you need them. But if you don't, if you don't have the the time or the or if you don't have the money and you know right now your budget's strained, then get those things later. You know, and just stick with the Dollar Tree bins for now. So this is just a quick video to go along with our blog post. Hopefully you got some great tips. Hope you guys have a great night.